everyone. Just another Tuesday night coming to you from the art room. Today we are going to talk about the flower pot project. So this is going to be unlike your textured boxes. This is going to be a project that you construct from five separate pieces. Um, and instead of folding up the sides, you're going to be creating a free floating base and then attaching the sides to it. So this flower pot stands uh, about six inches and it is textured on the outside and on the inside. I'm being very gentle with this because this is unfired and I've been manhandling it quite a bit. It's also textured on the bottom and has a drain hole. So there's a number of different components to this, but it builds off of what you have done of the other ones. So stepping it up, more of a challenge. So I'm going to walk you through, gently setting that down. I am going to walk you through what you need to do, what tools you need, and then the steps you're gonna take, and then you're going to do your project on your own. We'll see what you come up with after this weekend. So um, you are going to need five chunks of clay pre-cut. Um, I wasn't really paying attention. These don't need to be huge. I'm gonna suggest probably something about this size. So about, I don't know, half inch around. It's, it varies because, the, because it gets very thin there and then very thick on this end because my clay block varies as yours I'm sure does too. Five pre-cut things. You're going to have needed to trace the pattern that I gave you onto cereal box paper or uh, cardboard. This should be your base. You'll need to cut one of these. And then this one is the side. So you'll need four sides. All right, so five pieces all together. Again, put this on cardboard, something heavier um, to trace because it will be a lot easier than trying to do it with paper. The other thing that you are going to need, rolling pin, ruler, the rib tool that I gave you for smoothing out the clay and possibly also lifting it off the board, the large texture mats. So these are the two that I used. I happen to have two rubber ones. Um, you might have a plastic one like this. That's perfectly fine. And then some of you may also have um, the square colored plastic ones that look like this. So these may not entirely fit over the piece of clay, but it's totally fine to use. Um, I am going to have you put texture on both sides and we're gonna try a different technique with that today. So you'll see that soon. Other things you're need, gonna need, you're definitely gonna need your knife tool. I recommend if you have an actual X-Acto knife at your house, uh, particularly if it has a somewhat of a dull blade, perfect for this. Again, try not to cut into the mat, right? The, the cutting board, um, these, are, these are limited supply. Um, you won't need, for this stage of the project, anything to join it with yet. I'm going to do this in two days, so I'll come back, but this will magically be smushed together in one video. But when you get to the joining it, you're going to need vinegar, something to put the vinegar in, probably like no more than a tablespoon of vinegar. Really, you don't need that much. I'm putting mine on with a paintbrush. You can put yours on with your finger or whatever you happen to have handy. Um... That should do it. So I'm going to switch views and we'll start rolling this out. Okay, I'm back. Hope you can see everything. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and start rolling out these pieces. Um, note that we're gonna do something a little different this time. I am going to roll these out to size and then I am going to put the texture on it and then we're going to pause for the day. I'm not going to actually cut out the shapes today. I'm just going to check and see that it makes the size uh, that I want it to be. By rolling the textures on at the same time, um, both together, so the claim between the mats, what this is going to do is hopefully not cause any warping of the pattern. 
Um, and then we'll be able to cut everything out and everything should be unmussed tomorrow. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm just gonna go ahead, this will be a little bit boring. I'm gonna fast forward and put some jaunty music on for you. Uh, roll these out, you'll see me size it. And then tomorrow we will do the joining. So here we go. Okay, just to pause here, I hadn't mentioned side thickness before. On the previous pot I made, my edges are um, anywhere from about an eighth of an inch, which this is, to a little bit uh, under a quarter of an inch at about the 3 16th mark. This is thin enough, I'm gonna stop. This is going to be able to make a base quite comfortably, but I'm not going to be able to roll it out um, enough, if you can see, to get it to cover that side. So this was one of the thinner pieces of clay I started with, so this is done. It's even, uh, I'm happy with it, and I'm gonna roll texture on it very soon, so we're just gonna call that done for now. I'm gonna set this over here out of my way with a little base on it so that I remember that's what that is. All right, now I'm gonna go back to uh, rolling out. I would recommend for you guys, because this is your first time really connecting free floating things, make things a little thicker. And you know what, in retrospect, I probably should have kept my base a little thicker. So my recommendation for you guys is to keep that closer to a quarter of an inch because it's going to be supporting some weight. So hopefully I haven't um, caused tr myself trouble and grief. If I have some time today, I may actually roll out um, another one of those just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go on to rolling out the sides now. Okay, so I actually, I have rolled this out and I realized it is not going to make a side any way, shape or form. It will barely make a base, uh, just a little thicker. So I am going to keep that as a base and have it replace my other one. So I'll just have to add a lump of clay. So you definitely cut these a little thicker than I suggested. Hopefully I'm not redoing this video in five minutes because that would, that would stink. All right, let's see how this looks. That is basically spot on. So remember to carefully pull it up. If you need to use a tool to help and that'll keep it from warping. And you may need to flip and then repair the other side. with this one because I need to get some stuff out of my way. So this is now the right size that I want. I'm going to go ahead and apply the texture to both sides. I'm putting them on, sort of squaring it up, hoping that I've got the parts in that I need to have in. And I think I'm fine on that. So the mats are sliding just a little bit. I'm gonna go back over once more. And I feel like that got it. Okay, so yeah, you need to definitely stick to clay. This is too thin, um, the edge just totally came off. But what I have looks good. Let's see if this actually works. Oof, I've got just enough clay to make this happen. Um, because I've put a pattern on it, I can't twist it. If I come up this way, that's sort of okay. Let's see how the back side looks. Ooh, I may have wrecked this. Ooh, guys, I don't know. 
I, I may have to redo this piece. It's um, got too thin on me. Let's see what we got. Okay, I know I said I was going to cut this tomorrow, but this one is so delicate and it took me so long to figure out how to cut it. I'm just going to do it tonight because um, I may need to remake it. I don't know what the other side looks like yet. So I am using an exacto knife on the board. I am putting like no pressure on it at all. In case you're worried. Um, actually, it's almost too sharp, I think, for this part. It's more useful to have that when it gets leather hard. But this bit, I think the regular knife is, is actually better. Oof. Okay, other than that little square right there. guys, I had said I was going to uh, cut these out after. I'm just making the executive decision to do it now. Uh, I hope I don't regret that decision. If you would like to try cutting it after, please go right ahead uh, after it sits a day. Honestly, I'm just impatient. So satisfying that. All right, so this one came out really well. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, you can see it's under a quarter of an inch, probably just barely, um, but I'm happy with that thickness. So start thicker on your blocks and work your way in. And if I look at this, yeah, if I look at that, that's just under a quarter of an inch. It's about that sweet 3 16 just a little under a quarter. I would call that perfect. That feels like good flower pot thickness, um, good definition of the pattern on both sides. I'm really pleased with that. So I'm just going to saran wrap it in with the other one. Um, obviously a layer of saran wrap in between. So then I'm just gonna call those good for tonight and then start another one. Remember that clay has a memory. So if you want it to dry flat and to lay flat, you need to, um, sorry, if you want it to join and, and be flat and nice looking, uh, it has to sort of dry and take shape the way that you want it to be. So keep that in mind, even something like having the folded saran wrap under it could throw off the shape. So make sure I have mine laying flat on this desk with the saran wrap folded on top uh, because otherwise it will warp as it dries. So even something as simple as this little bulge here doesn't seem like much, but it will be. What I'll do tonight before I leave is I'll put that over it so that it has a little weight so this end isn't coming up and it's drying unevenly. So something about this thick is definitely more of what you want than the first ones I showed you. Sometimes if you have ends that get too thin and they're gonna just cause you problems, trim them off. That was just gonna be nothing but trouble. <laughs> I've rolled this one out a little unevenly. I'm not totally pleased with it, but it's big enough. We're gonna stop. I'm gonna bring it more towards down this way, I think, when I cut it.
that's pretty perfect. That's exactly what I'm going for. And if you notice, the texture is really nice. Um, came out just the way I want. I'm assuming that that is about, yep, just about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to do something that you guys should not do. And that is I'm going to use up my scraps of clay. I'm going to wedge this together. So this will turn into a small wedging demo. Uh, and just use it to create the base because I've got way more than enough here to do that. Um, and so, oops, I need something I get the pressure against. This is an example where your wedging skills come in. So there's no reason to not use this clay. I don't know if you guys can see this. Do you see these here? These are air pockets that I've squeezed out as I've done the ram's head. So you can start to see it's certainly getting, you know, the laminations of the ram's head and I'm squeezing out air along the side as I do it. See, there's a big air bubble that just popped. It's the whole point of it. So I'm gonna turn to the side so you guys can see this, although I don't have anything to push against. So this may not last long sending knives hurtling through space. And that's one thing you guys should take note of. If you don't, when you're wedging, have a downward thrust for your boards not scooting forward, ideally you want to do this against a back wall or something, uh, standing at a table or a counter. If you're not putting that forward pressure, then you're just not uh, putting the right pressure you need to actually wedge properly. So it's starting to get very consistent starting to not see air bubbles. I'm liking the way it feels. I'm still getting a few air bubbles popping out on the side. So I'll go just a little bit longer, but I don't want to go too long um, because it'll dry out and I'm going to be rolling it anyway. So I think we're going to stop it at about there. Oh, I got some more just then. We'll see. Blows up in the kiln. I'm sorry. All right, I'm not gonna put that in a true ball because I'm just going to flatten it out. I'm doing this a little lighter than I normally would because I'm on top of a light table. Not the ideal location to be rolling. different textures to the bottom. I did the honeycomb on the other one, so I'm going to do the squares on one side of this. I'm going to do leaf and flower. And I'm going to do this more towards the center. So this is uh, definitely a thicker base than the last time. This is probably over a little bit of a quarter of an inch. So just a smidge, but I think that is about what you guys want for this project. So do not cut the hole now. We'll cut it when it is um, leather hard and dry. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and then that concludes day one. All right, guys, that's it. That's part of day one. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I hope I edit it so that it makes sense. There's a lot there that didn't quite go right. Um, a lot of my sides, the first side that I rolled out is probably too thin. But um, you know what? It happens. Here it is. So yes, I'm still holding this piece. Got to wrap it up. Um, but looking forward to see what you guys come up with. And tune in tomorrow for day two.